Uh oh, I'm about to offend a whole lot of people. Here we go. Today we're gonna to be talking about how to have more energy and also why you happen to be so tired all the time. And the reason why this is important is because energy should be one of the most important things that you think about every single day. How much energy you have, because we only have 24 hours every single day. You have 24 hours, I have 24 hours, everybody has 24 hours. The life that you have and the life that you will create is dependent upon what you do in that time. But if you don't have energy, it's like living your life like you're driving a, you know, an 18 wheeler. Have you ever seen an 18 wheeler try to get going? It takes a while. It takes a while. It takes a while. When in reality, if you plan, a plan, a plan and pay attention to your energy throughout the day, you can get your body to move like a Ferrari. So if I were to say, Hey, life is a race. Would you like an 18 wheeler or would you like a Ferrari? You're probably going to pick the Ferrari, right? Why? Because it goes faster. So let's talk about, I'm going to give you four key topics we're going to dive into pretty in depth today as far as energy goes as to why most people are tired, but then also if you pay attention to these and really plan them out, these will all help you have more energy throughout the day. So four key factors. Number one, obviously is going to be sleep. So let's dive into sleep. Uh, we're going to talk about ways to sleep better. And we're also going to talk about how to stay awake better as well. So first thing that you want to think about when you wake up in the morning, some, some of you wake up when the sun is already up. Some of you guys wake up after the sun, before the sun is up. Some of you guys wake up after the sun is up. And the first thing that you want to do is when the sun comes out in the morning, you want to try to get sun on your skin and you want to get it on as much of your skin as possible. So if you happen to live, you've got nowhere near you, get butt ass naked, go outside, get some, get some sunlight, make sure the kids aren't around on your body. The more that you can get on you, the better. Don't get a sunburn or anything like that. If you live in downtown Miami, but the sun comes up and it hits you on your balcony, don't get butt naked on your balcony and then blame it on me. You know, go out there in your bathing suit, get some sun on your skin. There's a couple reasons why this is important. Number one, the sun on your skin tells your brain to stop making melatonin. And I'm going to give you another tip on that as well. And number two, it sets your circadian cycle, which is the sleep cycle that you have. So you want to get out and actually get the sun on your skin for just a few minutes. It doesn't have to be anything too long. The second thing that you want to do while you're out there as well, you may have heard me talk about this before, is to go and actually look at the blue in the sky. So you don't want to look at the sun itself. You want to look at the blue. The receptors in your eye, when they see that blue, what they do is they stop making melatonin as well. Now, let me give you a secret. Uh, for those of you guys that are out there and you have SAD, which is uh, seasonal effectiveness disorder, which I found that I have, when it's gloomy for a while, you notice, like I can usually tell what the weather is when I wake up um, before, because if I feel like I'm dragging ass and it's hard for me to get out of bed, there's a pretty good chance, uh, like it is today in Austin right now. It's kind of rainy. It's not the, the most beautiful day. But if I jump out of bed and it's easier for me to get out of bed, usually there's not a cloud in the sky. So some people are affected by, this, the, by the clouds. Some people aren't. It depends on who you are. There's a thing called the Philips Blue Light, and there's other companies that make these as well, but I know the one that I have is called the Philips Blue Light. And what you want to do is if you notice, if you live in a place with some really long winters or doesn't get a whole lot of sun, what you do is you take this thing, you actually put it in the corner. You don't look directly at it, but if you're going to sit there and work on your computer, you put it off to the side and your eyes will start to actually see that blue, which tells the melatonin to stop being made in your brain, which then allows you to wake up and have more energy. Um, so another thing you want to do when you talk about the blue is you want to try to, when the sun starts to set, you want to try to remove as much blue from your environment as possible. So the first thing that you got to think about is your phone. Your phone has a whole hell of a lot of blue. There's something called night shift on iPhone, Samsung's all the other phones, I don't, Androids, I don't know what they're called. But night shift, when the sun starts to set, it starts to take the blue and turn it more into red. Why is this important? Well, the same reason why blue makes you wake up in the morning is the same reason why blue makes you stay awake in the evening. So you want to start removing blue from your environment. Another thing that you need to do, you need to start thinking about your computer. If you have a MacBook, I have a MacBook. There's something that's free. It's called Flux, F-L dot, what is it? F dot L U X flux. Same exact thing as night shift is when it is the sun starts to set and knows where you are in the world. It will actually start to change the blues in your screen to red, which then allows you and makes it easier to fall asleep. Um, this is the reason why you see so many people wearing blue blockers at night when they're starting to go to bed. It's because if you're watching TV, if you're walking around your house, these blue blockers, those glasses tend to take the blue out of your, your vision. So it allows you to fall asleep better because most of the time humans, 
100,000 years ago, were not staying up at 11, 30, 12 o'clock at night. They were going to bed a little bit after the sun went down, right? So you, you have a, a couple different things. Number one, you have night shift on your phone. You have flux on your MacBook. You have blue blockers as well. Um, you wanna try to get away from your phone. You wanna try to get away from your TV uh, 30 minutes to an hour before you're gonna go to bed. And here's one thing that I don't really hear many people talk about, is you also wanna stay away from overhead lights. So in my house, we have lights literally built into the ceiling, right? You wanna try to stay away from those at night. And the reason why is because you actually have receptors on the bottom of your eyes that actually notice that there's light above your head, which your brain thinks is what? The sun. And so at night, you actually don't want to have overhead lighting on. You want to have lamps that are on the ground about eye level or lower that are actually producing light that you have at night. So what you're doing is you're tricking your brain into thinking, hey, you know, it's about time to go to bed so that you can fall asleep. You can get better REM sleep. You can get better deep sleep as well. Um, turn off the overhead lights. Get rid of all the blue as much as you possibly can. Next thing when we dive into sleep itself is make sure that your room is as black as you possibly can make it. Like if you can make it so you can't see your hand in front of your face at night, that's perfect. You want it to be that way. And the reason why is because you actually have photoreceptors on your skin and those photoreceptors are basically like little eyes. So even if your eyes are closed, your skin, the photoreceptors on your skin still know that there's light out there. So you want to try to make your room as dark as possible. Do not... I know there's some people out here. I'm going to, I'm going to disappoint you. You probably already know the answer to this anyways. You aren't, you know, you shouldn't be watching. You shouldn't have the freaking TV on when you go to bed. It's not good for you. Uh, number one, the photoreceptors in your eyes are still noticing that there's light in inside of the room. So it's going to mess your sleep up. And as well, it's going to, <clears throat> you know, it's going to, um, as you're hearing it, it's going to keep your brain semi awake. Cause your brain, even when you're asleep is still listening the whole time that you're asleep. Like if you're asleep, deep sleep and you hear a loud bang in your house, it's going to wake you up. That's because your brain is still awake. So if you're listening to, if your brain is listening to the TV all night long, it's going to be keeping you out of REM sleep and out of deep sleep and not getting the sleep that you need to. Therefore, you're not going to have the energy that you need to. If you have to fall asleep with something on, get a fan, you know, get some white noise machine. Uh, my dog snores like crazy. He snores louder than the average human. Toby, 12 years old, snores louder than anybody I've ever met. I have to have a white noise machine or else I don't sleep when he's inside the room. So we have a white noise machine inside of our room, right? Next thing you think about as well, your bed, your bed, does it suck? One of the things that people don't invest enough money into is their bed. Reason why is because they're cheap. I don't know, but, but the reason why it's important is because of the fact that you spend one third of your life, right? The average person sleeps for eight hours a night. If you sleep for eight hours, that is one third of the 24 hours that you have in a day. Right? So one third of your life is spent on a bed. Make sure that you have a really good bed that gets you into REM sleep, that gets you into deep sleep. There's tons of different, you know, Apple watches now and um, beds that, that measure it. And aura, there's a thing called an aura ring, uh, uh, whoop, all of these things measure your sleep at night. And so you can measure them to actually see if you really want to get deep into it and see how you're sleeping and, and start to get down to it and get nerdy on it. You can get really nerdy on how well you're sleeping. So if you want to have more energy, the first thing you gotta think about is how is your sleep, right? If you have no energy throughout the day, it might be because you're just not taking the right measures when you fall asleep, okay? That's the first thing I think about always with energy, obviously asleep. Second thing, obvious, diet. What are you eating throughout the day, right? Digestion is the most energy consuming thing that your body does. There is nothing more that your body does that's more energy consuming than digestion. So if you're eating stuff that's very heavy, that's very greasy, that's very fatty, that's fast foods, you're not going to have energy. And the reason why is because your body is using the energy and shutting everything else down so that it can get this food out of your body because it's like, we got to get this out, right? So what are you eating throughout the day? You know, if you're eating a heavy breakfast, if you're eating a heavy lunch, if it's greasy, if it's fast food, all these things that I said, it's going to be slowing you down. Another thing to think about that a lot of people don't think about as well is have you done an allergy test to see if you have any food allergies? Because if you have food allergies, that's your body going, there's something that's an emergency. We've got to get it out and it's going to use as much energy as it can to get rid of whatever it is that you're allergic to. So what type of food are you eating? Normally, what ends up being the best for people, food that they eat throughout the day to try to give you the mo most energy. You know, you can do uh, leafy greens, light greens, maybe some chicken on top of it, whatever it is that works for you. Maybe some, 
you know, beans and corn on top of it, whatever it is that, that will give you energy. Everybody's body is different. So what gives me energy might take energy away from you and vice versa. So what does your energy look like throughout the day after you eat? When you have lunch, are you tired after lunch? That's something that you should eliminate from your diet if you're tired after lunch. So start paying attention to the things that make you tired, right? Um, normally what I like to have throughout the day, a shake. It's just easy, gets down, easy to digest. I get a lot of nutrients from it. I'm good to go for it throughout the rest of the day. Usually my biggest meal is at dinner. I just do that because I usually have a lot more energy throughout the day if I eat less. That's just the way it happens to be for me. And I had a, an interview that's coming out pretty soon with Dr. David Sinclair. Dr. David Sinclair is the head of aging at Harvard. And uh, we were talking about the whole thing and you know just the stuff that you eat throughout the day. And he s recommends you skip at least one meal per day. Number one, it'll make you live longer. And number two, it'll also give you a lot more energy, right? So if we're talking about diet as well, another thing to think about is caffeine. Uh-oh, I'm about to offend a whole lot of people. Here we go. In case you didn't know, the half-life of caffeine is seven hours. What does half-life mean? Half-life means it takes the half, if, if I have 100 milligrams of, ca uh, of caffeine, right? The half-life would be how long does it take for it to be half of the amount? So from 100 milligrams to 50 milligrams. What's crazy is that the half-life of caffeine is five to seven hours. So if you are a late caffeine drinker, so let's say I have a coffee at 4 p.m., that means at 11 o'clock at night, half of that caffeine is still in my body, right? So at 11 p.m., my 4 p.m. coffee, half of that is still in my body and hasn't gotten released yet. So you have to think it to yourself, if I wanna be able to sleep better, I should probably start paying attention to the caffeine that I have and the caffeine intake that I have. Once again, half-life of five to seven hours. So I recommend, and what I always say is, you know, one o'clock is probably the latest that you should have some form of caffeine. Uh, if you've been listening to my podcast long enough, you've heard me talk about it. I really don't drink a whole lot of coffee anymore, even though I love coffee. What I have switched to is yerba mate. Reason why I switched to yerba mate is because caffeine, the coffee caffeine, when you drink coffee, there's a massive spike in caffeine, and then you know the coffee drops. When you have a couple hours later, the it just drops and your energy drops. So you might have a massive spike and a massive drop, and that's why you don't have energy throughout the day. If you do want to have caffeine, instead of having it in coffee, if you have it in something like yerba mate and some other types of tea, yerba mate, everybody always sends me a message and asks, Y-E-R-B-A space M-A-T-E. That's yerba mate. Uh, your, liver digests, your liver and your body digests it differently than coffee. And so instead of a massive spike and a massive drop, it's a massive spike. And then it takes about five hours for your body to drop that. So instead of having a massive drop, it's a lot easier of a drop. So something to think about, think about the caffeine when you're taking it, when you're not taking it. Um, and remember five to seven hour half-life is caffeine inside of your body. So last thing I think about as well, or sorry, the, the third thing I think about, second to last thing I think about uh, is exercise. The more that you exercise, even though it doesn't make a whole lot of sense, the more energy that you use inside of exercise, the more your body will actually start to make more energy. So if you start exercising a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, your body will start to make more energy every single day, right? So if you're somebody who's very tired throughout the day, you don't have a whole lot of energy. One of the questions I'm going to ask you is how much do you exercise? What kind of force do you put through your, your body through and what do you do throughout the day? Um, if you exercise more, your body's going to create more energy. Find out when your best time to create more energy is for you. So for me, working out 9 a.m. 10 a.m. is usually my favorite time to work out i have the opportunity to do so because i have my own business and i work from home it might be the same for you it might not be the same for you but when do you get the most energy to work out when is your best time to work out you should figure it out maybe it's six o'clock in the morning four o'clock in the morning for you maybe it's noon maybe it's 6 p.m find out when the best time is for you to make sure that you're staying consistent with your exercise if you're tired throughout the day there's a pretty good chance that you're not working out enough and your body runs more efficiently whenever you start to work out as well. And it also helps you fall asleep and it also helps you sleep better, which in turn helps you get more energy as well. So think about your exercise, how much you're exercising. And the last thing I think about as far as why people are tired is your environment. Your environment will make you tired as well. Think about the people that you surround yourself with. Do they give you energy? Do they strip energy away from you? If you're around them for a half an hour, do you feel more energized or do you feel like crap after you're done with them? Right? So what does your environment look like? Okay. Second thing, what does your job look like? If you hate your job, I promise you this, it is stealing energy and sucking energy out of you. It's also sucking your soul away. 
probably if you hate your job, right? That's the way I felt when I hated my job is it was like just soul sucking to be, to be there when I was younger and I was at a job, right? So the job you have can be stealing your energy away from you. Maybe your coworkers at your job are stealing your energy away from you, right? Um, do you sit all day long? Think about that. Uh, one of the things that, that they recommend is getting up and going for a walk, even if it's three or four minutes every single hour, get your body moving. If you're not moving a lot throughout the day, your body's going to make less energy. So if you don't have a whole lot of energy throughout the day, are you sitting most of the day, right? Let's talk about how to make energy on demand real quick. One of the things that I've been doing a lot lately, I found it from one of my friends that we did it during a workout is this thing called ski breaths. And what you do is you breathe in through the nose and you breathe out through the mouth. But when you breathe in, you take your hands and a fist, you put them above your head. And when you breathe out, you breathe out and push down as if you're like a skier, right? So it's for those of you guys listening on the podcast, you don't know what the hell I'm doing. For those of you guys watching on video and you do it over, but you do it aggressively. Hands up, breath, breathe in through your nose, hands down, you breathe out through your mouth and you do it over and over and over again. Do that for a minute and two minutes. You're going to be out of breath. It'll make your heart go like crazy and it will wake you up. That is how you get your body to wake up, to force yourself to make more energy. So if you feel like you're, if you feel like it's three o'clock and you're dragging ass and you're not getting as much done, you still have a lot to do for the day, but you know, oh my gosh, I can't drink coffee because I won't fall asleep tonight. Force your body through movement and through breath to give you energy on demand. Your body is a beautiful thing. If you need energy, you can force your body to trick itself to create energy. If like, you know, if, we, if it was 100,000 years ago and you and I are really tired and we're walking through wherever the hell we live 100,000 years ago and uh, you and I are on a walk and a cheetah pops out of the bush and starts chasing us, we won't be like, oh, I'm too tired. You know, no, your body's gonna click in. It's gonna force itself to make energy. So how can you trick your body to exactly the same? One of the ways through these ski breaths Works so well. Breathe in through the nose, put your arms above your head, breathe out through your mouth, push them down as if you're skiing on, you know, snow. Um, get the heart rate up, move more. Next thing I think as well, as far as your environment goes, how do you talk to yourself in your head? Like, do you tell yourself you don't have energy? Because I promise you this, if you tell yourself, oh, I'm so tired. If you say you're tired to people, if you say it out loud all the time, if you say you're a tired person, say you didn't sleep well, all that stuff, you will feel more tired if you say you're tired. I promise you that. So start to think about that. Do you say how tired you are throughout the day? And then also, how do you talk to yourself in your head? Do you build yourself up or do you talk shitty to yourself? If you talk trash to yourself, if you're negative, if you have negative self-talk, I guarantee you that negative self-talk is gonna make you feel worse about yourself. It's gonna make you feel worse. And in turn, it's going to steal energy away from you. Hey, thanks so much for watching this video. If you wanna learn even more about mastering your mind, click right here and watch this video as well. Today, we're gonna to be talking about the four things that you need to focus on to have more energy in your life.